worship you and we lift your holy name. We are here to exalt the Lord our God. And we won't let the world press in any worries, any strife. We proclaim you the way, the truth, the life. of Almighty God as we come together in corporate worship. We exalt you yes. to the highest place we yes, know how Jesus. to lift you to, Lord God. Yes, Lord. For you alone yes. are worthy. You alone yes. are worthy, worthy, worthy. Thank Jesus. you, God. Lord, I pray that you would help us in this moment, Lord, just shake off anything, any condemnation, any distraction, any woundedness, Lord, that is keeping us from gazing into your face and just thanking you for your love today clinging to your very presence, Lord, inviting you in, not just to this building, Lord God, but into every heart, in every space, Lord, in our lives, Lord God, because you deserve to sit on the throne of our lives, Lord. You reign, Almighty God. And so we just give way right now. We submit to you. And as we begin to press in in our worship, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would inhabit the praises of your people. But Lord, we thank you for the corporate opportunity, the family of God coming together to exalt you and so we praise you and thank you for that in jesus name amen 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 awesome well, we want to welcome you to city christian center i'm pastor steve and we want to also welcome those of you who are online but we're going to just take a moment as we normally do as a family and just we're going to greet one another in the name of the lord so go ahead shake a few hands give a few five fives and just speak out some blessing over people
Let's help uh, help them get back. Look at you, beats and everything. Were you watching? I was gonna take it. Yeah. <laughs> I would deserve it, I think. I know. Search the world, but it couldn't fail me. And man's empty praise and treasures that fade were never enough. Then you came along. Oh, there. 
There's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Lord, there's nothing better than you. There's Yes, yes, yes. He's softening the land of our hearts if we just allow him to do that work in us this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus, what a friend for sinners. Jesus, lover of my soul. Friends may fail me for Assail me, he my savior makes me whole. Hallelujah, what a savior! Hallelujah, what a friend, saving, helping, keeping, loving. A strength in weakness, let me hide myself in him. Tempted, tried, and often failing, he my strength, my victory wins.
Jesus, what a hell in sorrow while the billows over me roll. Even when my heart is breaking, He, my comfort, helps my soul. just want to reach out and say, I just need to know how to get to know who this Jesus is, that I just need this eternal friend of mine that's never going to let me down, that I just encourage you just to send us an email, just to write something in the chat column, and that there are people here this morning that are going to answer you, and that you can get to know who this Jesus is that can be your eternal friend forever, that will never let you down. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. We just seal that word this morning, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is the air I breathe. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. This is the air. Your holy presence yes. Yes. living in me. Yes, Jesus, Jesus. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your faith.
This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my day. is my daily bread. was lost, but now I'm found in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You're the very air we breathe. your word says that in him we live and move and have our being. You literally are the air we breathe. We exist because you choose for us to exist. And you keep us in this imperfect world working through our imperfect issues asking you to transform us completely. But in that process you've called us to be a light to the world. So, God, we need more of your presence. We are desperate yes, for you. Lord. We want yes, more Lord. of you yes, in our hearts Lord. and lives. Yes, we want to reflect you, Lord God. Yes, so continue to transform us here this morning. We are waiting, Lord. We are opening ourselves. We are kneeling before you and saying, God, have your way. Have your way, Lord Jesus. We're desperate for a move of the Holy Spirit in this place and in our families and in this city, Lord yes, God. Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. We, we, just, we just need you, Lord God. We call out to you, Jesus. We worship you, 
So, Lord, you are invited right now. And may our spirits be prepared, Lord, as we walk through these next few moments in service. God, I know you want to speak to our hearts. You want to transform us and set us in the right direction, set our feet to dancing. Lift our spirits. I want to give you all the praise and glory. For you alone are worthy. All God's people said, amen, amen. You may be seated. morning. Sit back, get comfortable. You got me for a while. <laughs> two things this morning, two different hats. One hat, actually one no hat. <laughs> Testimony about Cuba and then the announcements. So like normal, we start off, before I forget, your offering. We don't hand the plate out anymore. Well, thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Nobody? Anybody? I offer a delivery service. They go in the box here. Before I forget, I'll tell you the announcements later, but knowing me, I'd go home with them still in my pocket. <laughs> so, we'll start off with the testimony. Okay. The first hat. Now, of course, we tried to wear things from Canada, but there's a little more story to the hat than you know. My dad died about a month and a half ago, and while sorting through his clothes, we donated most of them, and things like that. We kept a lot of the other items. This was one of the items, and I knew I was going to Cuba soon, so I kept the hat. When I was on the work site, Mike and Steve, Pastor Steve will tell you, I wore this hat most of the time. This was my dad's hat. I never told him that. But when we leave, we tend to leave everything but the shirt on our back and the clothes on our body, so we give it to folks in Cuba. I couldn't leave the hat. I just couldn't. So, my testimony. It starts off with the scripture, Proverbs 12, or Proverbs 13, verse 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. I had a very poignant moment. It was the last day of Cuba. We'd worked hard all week, busting rocks, making cement for the Jesus, doing all that sort of stuff. Work and work and work. And well, we hadn't had a chance to pour the cement yet. And Friday was the day. And every day before we worked, there would be a meeting of the minds. And I'd just disappear as they decided what they could or couldn't do. And I went out back and found a quiet place. And I was praying and I was sitting. I was just chilling. And I heard this. I heard what I thought was an older woman wailing, like you see on the movies in the Middle East where they mourn and they wail very loudly. Well, that's what I heard. It, it would keep going. It would stop. It would go. It was about 20 minutes of this, and I didn't know what to think of it. Later on, I found out that someone had committed suicide in uh, one of the houses nearby. I assumed it was that house. And... Uh, it really hit me that Cubans don't have a lot of hope. The average Cubans don't have a lot of hope there. Um, since we've been going there, we've seen two or three changes of leadership there. Um, most Cubans have a very hard time making ends meet. But I met some Cubans that do have hope. And every trip we went, all five trips that uh, Pastor Steve and Mike and I and others have joined in on other ones have seen the same thing. During the church, I mean, during one of the church services, the power went out. I think you've heard about that. It was cool. It was like they were ready. The one guy just grabbed his acoustic guitar, continued on. We don't need electricity. We don't need lights. And we kept on going, and I would say the worship was better. It was very cool. So... The power going out during a church service didn't stop them. 
walking many kilometers to go to church didn't stop them. If both our cars didn't work this morning, Robin and I, would we have walked? We don't live that far from here. We're probably three or four or five kilometers. I think some of the Cubans walk that far. Warmer weather, yes, but dusty and dirty. And I got to admit, they walk in a lot of dusty, dirty, rocky places, but when they get to church, I don't know if they go up behind and dust themselves off or wear different shoes and switch over, but they always look their best. But having to walk many kilometers didn't stop them. Not having building materials doesn't stop them. They don't give up. That happened every single of our five trips. Something was missing, but it didn't stop them. For the average, even Christian Cubans, they're not wealthy. They have a hard time making things meet. We hear about the left hand and the right hand, meaning the legal government way and the, the semi-black market way. You have to do that or you don't survive. It didn't stop them. But I didn't give you all of Proverbs 13, verse 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. And the thing that has been in my heart for the last number of months is this is not our home. I live here. I'm here temporarily. I'm supposed to be serving Jesus and doing the best I can to help others join me in that home. But this is not our home, and I think perhaps the Cubans have a good idea of that. That no matter where they are, they can continue on. It doesn't stop them. But it was, for me, <clears throat> we went to church three times a week, different churches, each, each of the five years. Every time for me, it, it's a little awkward then when they come over and thank you or, during the last service. Some, the odd one has a tear in their eye, thanking you for coming. Others, the big smile, big warm smile, some Shirley hugs there. I always felt a little uncomfortable because I thought, I'm not doing much here. I'm coming to a lovely sunny place. I'm helping out for a week, then I go home to one of the nicest countries in the world. So I, I always felt awkward when they were thanking me so much. But I understood where it came from, and I think even now more I understand where it comes from. Uh, probably for me, my big hope, of course, is that we lent a little bit of hope to them. But what I really, deep down in my heart, Rick's secret corner of his heart, what I want to hear is tomorrow there is an explosion of faith in Cuba and the Holy Spirit is falling down there and it changes the country. That's what I want to hear. And uh, and I can uh, say in my heart, okay, I helped a little bit with that. Even if it doesn't happen, I helped a tiny little bit with that. And while we were there, we saw, what, two, three, four people get saved? That's pretty cool. If we hadn't have come, would that have happened? I don't know. Maybe, probably, but that was pretty cool. On a more upbeat note, that was a poignant moment. There's just one that was I call an upbeat moment, and he's not here. Well, he can watch the video. <clears throat> it was my brother, Caleb. <laughs> <clears throat> if you haven't heard it yet, Caleb is Caleb to us. To you, I don't know if you can call him that. I'm not sure. You weren't there. <laughs> but we'd tell us our names, and he, Caleb's like, my name's Caleb. Caleb? No, it's Caleb. Ah, Caleb. Yeah, it's Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> so from then on, we called him Caleb. Well, he was in my, I, I'm watching Caleb, Caleb, whatever. <laughs> I, I was watching him, I'll admit it, because I've known him since he was a, a teenager, and love he and his brothers and sister and watch their faith and watch them grow. And Caleb had a, a, an awful situation there in his football accident. But I've watched him. And I watched him closely then, I, I will admit. And there he was, making friends at every job site and at the resort. The guy has a heart so big and a personality to match it. And he was out there making friends with all sorts of folks. 
I think the one German woman was trying to set him up with, his, with her daughter. I'm pretty sure. And we reminded of them, him of that a few times. But then there was this one moment. You ever, you ever have those moments where you say, let's just freeze time. This is good. Just freeze time. The world can go away. I'm just enjoying this. It was the last day. It was uh, Saturday. We were just ready to get on that plane as soon as possible, but we couldn't. It was a late afternoon one. All of us ended up in this one spot in the resort. Like picture this room with picnic tables and a roof over it. The ocean is about 100 meters away. There's a beautiful breeze coming in. We've all got a, a little snack or something. And there's this Cuban dude playing the guitar. And he's playing a, a top 40 North American song. Then he plays a Cuban song. He does that for a while. And I don't know the background on this, but he stops and essentially hands the guitar to Caleb, who gets up, and this guy has a break. And Caleb sits down, and he starts playing. And it's beautiful. And he's just free, freestyling or something, and it's gorgeous. And the crowd starts to gather. One woman gets up and starts enjoying the music. And then Caleb kind of stops, and he uh, plays Leonard Cohen's song, Hallelujah. And one by one, the people start joining in singing, one after another. And I'm pretty sure we may have been the only Christians there, but it felt kind of worshipful right then. I just didn't want to stop. The song stops, obviously. And that was, a, that was an amazing moment for me to see how Caleb's challenges haven't stopped his witness for Christ or his huge heart for people. It was really, really cool. And that's about all I got to say about that. So, now the news. I know, quick change. So, we've already welcomed you. We already showed you where to put your offering. There is a family gathering after church, so please stay. There's always more than enough food. Every People take home food that isn't eaten, so there, if you didn't bring any, doesn't matter, stick around. Uh, right after church, you'll go out there. There'll be lovely smells wafting in. We hope we don't distract from you, Pastor Steve. But <sighs> So stick around for that. Youth Bowling, March 17th. It's like you know. <laughs> uh, Pastor Brianna, that's the youth. Uh, March 17th, I'm guessing in the evening sometime. Talk to this most excellent youth leader here for more details. Joy Group, Thursday, March 23rd, 11.30 a.m. I'm guessing Peggy at the church. Yeah. Men's Breakfast, Saturday, March 25th, 9 a.m. here. Come a little early. If you're a gentleman who is in the church and you haven't been here long, you want to know more about the men, talk to me afterwards. Give me your email address. You get very little information from here. We email a lot more. If you want to become plugged into the men's ministry, give me your email. I'll put you on the list. You'll hear about the stuff more regularly. Did you know Easter is coming? Talk about a poignant day. Friday is always, you know, that's a hard day for Christians in a way, but we know that Sunday is coming. So, Divine Embrace, they're calling it, April 7th on Friday, a combined service with uh, held at Kingston Gospel Temple just down the road. If you don't know where it is, talk to us. It's fairly easy to find. Anyway, the churches are all getting together there. It's a very, very cool time to see so many brothers and sisters in Christ. But wait. There's more that weekend. Friday is Good Friday, KGT. Saturday is the Easter egg hunt. We do it over in the park. No, sorry, we've been doing it out here, haven't we, on the lawn? Which are we doing this time, Curious? Going to the park? You ever go to Walmart and you see those little chocolate eggs? They're about that big. Well, <laughs> just in case you needed to know, chuck them up here, my dear. 
buy all they have. Okay, clean them out. Bring them here. We need eggs. We need chocolate eggs. If you've ever been downstairs in the, the resource room, it's also the junk room. It's the place you throw everything else that won't fit anywhere else. <laughs> Says you. <laughs> I wish you luck. <laughs> there are huge rough totes full of those two-piece chocolate egg or plastic eggs that we put the chocolate eggs in, and then we spread them out over here for kids of the neighborhood to come. It's a huge outreach for our church. Pastor Brianna, do you need help uh, taping them up and stuffing them with chocolate? More news on that. Come talk to Pastor Brianna, okay? It's, a lab it's very much a laborious thing, but it's very important. But wait, there's more. Sunday celebration here. So Easter Friday, KGT, Saturday here, egg hunt. You could probably use some help even just holding the, the hordes of children back. And then Sunday, we come and worship our risen Lord here. So what a cool weekend. Info directory. <laughs> Who picked the picture? <laughs> nice! Uh, well, that's not bad, actually. I thought you were going to put the flowing locks version <laughs> out in the uh, foyer is information on the church directory. There's a form that you fill out. It's, you put in there as much as you want. Name, phone number, a few other things. But if it's just your name, that's fine. And then we're looking at getting a photo. We're going to make, a, I believe, a, a hard copy. It's not going to be online. It's not designed so people will be phoning you or anyone outside this church can see it. It's just made so that it's kind of a family thing so we know we, we can look, oh, that's who their name is. Otherwise, we put a name tag on you when you come in, maybe. I don't know. But the, uh, the, the church directory, that's what that's about. See it out in the uh, foyer. Other than that, Pastor Brianna, you want to bring the kids together and pray them off? All right, kids, you can come on up for Super Church. And just while they're coming, just so you know, there are paper copies for the CCC directory, but we also have a QR code on the red table in there. So if you want to take out your phone and scan it over the QR code, you can fill it out online as well. All right, will you join me in praying for our kids today? Oh, I'll let, I'll let them come first. Come on over. She's coming. There you go. All right, let's pray together. Father, I thank you for each and every one of these kids. Thank you for the boys and girls that you've designed them to be and the leaders that you're developing them to be. I pray a blessing over them as they go down to Super Church today. I pray that they would have fun and that they would know how much you love and care for them. I pray a special blessing over the leaders. Uh, Thank you for their heart for these kids and their heart for sharing your word and, and you with these kids. Uh, I pray Holy Spirit anointing as they teach and share today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God is good, amen? amen? So much going on. And uh, thank you, Rick, for sharing about, about that hat. You know, the, the folder I used at my pastor's conference in Ghana and in, in Cuba was my dad's music folder, too. I brought that with me. I get exactly what you're, you're thinking. And I'm thinking, I've got my, my dad's stuff over here. I hope he can see. Dad, I'm using your folder here, preaching the word. <laughs> oh, God is good. Yeah, there have been so much going on. Um, the pictorial directory came out of a, a question from our business meeting. And I thought, well, it might take a little while. <clears throat> No, not with our team. It was good. So you got it on paper, you got a QR code, or you got it online. Either way, we are going to get your information one way or the other. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. Just kidding. But uh, no, it's, it's, it's for family life only. And, but it's also, you know, we've seen a lot of new people. We had over this last year, I think, 14 or 15 new members. So that is awesome. And praise God for that. 
I've had lots of years in my ministry where 15 people have come to church, but not where 15 people have become members in one year. So that is phenomenal. So I praise God for that. As I get into the Word this morning, I'm going to, uh, it's called Bring Your A Game. And uh, if, if you're not familiar with that, it's sort of a, a sports thing that, you know, you've been practicing all this time, you've been playing, but now we're getting into the championship and the coaches in the, in the locker room going, all right, guys, this is it. It's time to do your level best and then some. I need 120% from you. I want you to give not only what you've given all season long to get us here, but you really got to bring your A game. You need to be switched on. You need to do your very level best. And then I go to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. It's connected. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. I got saved when I was about 8 years old, and then I recommitted my life when I was 17 years old. So I've been doing this a while, and some of you probably have been to church a few times. I won't ask how long, because I think for some of us it might take a while to get to that number. <laughs> That's good. And some of you, this might be new. Someone online might be like, you know, we're checking this out for the first time. If you're the first time, welcome. Let us know. I, I'll, grab, I'll, I'll buy you a coffee. Now, I hope there's not hundreds of people on there, but I, I do like coffee. So, you know, bring your A game. And he says, love the Lord your God with everything you've got. Now, this is the commandment. And these are the statutes and judgments which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess, that you may fear the Lord your God and keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command you, you and your sons and your daughter, or son and your grandson, all the days of your life, that your days may be prolonged. Therefore, hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you, and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord the God of your fathers has promised you, a land flowing with milk and honey." Then he says, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love him with all you've got. Now, I think most of us who come to church get that whole first part. I need to listen to the word. I need to do what it says. I need to commit myself to being regularly in church, to the fellowship of believers. I need to do devotions regularly. I need to pray and sing and read the Psalms. And I need to do all that stuff because I'm supposed to do all that stuff. And we are supposed to do all that stuff, but my heart is that we are in relationship with God. Not just doing stuff for Him. You, a boss, you do that for a boss. I'm talking about the lover of our soul and learning how to love Him. God is in great, uh, great at confirming words. As I was, this word came to me Monday morning after Sunday, you know, the pastor's day off that I don't take on Mondays necessarily. Uh, <clears throat> He's great at confirming the word. Uh, the other day I woke up with this message on my heart. And all I had was my phone. So I'm frantically typing in the notes page trying to get it. And I'm all thumbs. So I'm like, every time I'm supposed to hit the space bar, I have a period. And then I end up with a, a sentence that's four lines long. But I'm trying to get this out of my head because it's just coming. And, uh, and then on Thursday morning while Sharon and I were doing devotions, we came across this verse that completely coincides with the message that God was speaking to me. It's amazing how God confirms and reaffirms and, and sets us when we're truly seeking after Him. He can lead us to certain things that He wants to convey to us in our spirits. So God is good. Today I want to share uh, a, a distinction, and it won't be hard for you to figure out, but hopefully it will cause you to pause and examine how true this statement is in your personal walk with Jesus. It's a question that Jesus Himself asked Peter after He denies Christ three times and after the crucifixion and after he rises again on the third day and after he appears to his disciples, Peter says, do you love me? So simple. Hey, do you, do you love me? And three times he asks them in John 21, 15 to 17. Uh, and, and the love response is uh, agapeo, which is God's love, the love of God that unites and heals and is supernatural. And there's the phileo love that is friends and is a close family. It's a natural thing. And there, there's eros, which is a romantic love and, and that kind of thing as well. But these two, this interaction is about agapeo and phileo. And I've heard a number of messages concerning this interaction between the Messiah and Peter. Some are on grace. Some are on the different references of the word of love in the Greek. Some on God's ability to restore our destiny, to redeem us, to redeem our purpose. And some of them on forgiveness. But this morning, I don't want to 
work on the mental gymnastics that Peter was going through. He had some shame. He figured his, his life with Jesus was over because he had kind of, he blew it, right? And the beautiful thing was that God was there to show that his unconditional love cut through all of that. Today, I want to simplify the question, even though it may complicate your answer. I mean, you know what you're supposed to answer, right? <laughs> Do you love me? Peter goes, yeah, of course. I'm doing all these things for you. No, no, no. <laughs> Do you love me? Feed my sheep, he says. And at the end, Peter's even a bit hurt because he's like, three times, Lord, really? You're going to ask me this again? Do you love me? Of course, I know the answer. It's that, yes, I love you. But Jesus is getting be past. The, don't give me the Sunday school answer. Don't just say I love you because you know that's what you're, that's the response you're supposed to have. I want you actually to feel like you're in love with me so that you can say I love you out of a heart that's full of love, not full of information. We, we need the information. If you didn't know, then you wouldn't know to love him. We got to know. But in knowing, we want to get past. And like I said, I've been a Christian for decades, and I want to make sure that every Sunday, I, I do this almost every Sunday, and I sing, or I, I pray, and I preach, and, and I still want to make sure that I am in love with this God I'm telling you about, and I want to make sure you're in love with Jesus, the lover of your soul, no matter what else is going on in our lives. So hear me and trust me, I'm not calling your relationship with God into question, but the health of it I am addressing because only you and the Holy Spirit can answer that question. I believe everyone here and online would probably say that they have some kind of feelings for the Savior of their souls. Don't get offended, at least until I'm finished, then decide. But let's see if you're in agreement with these sta statements. We need to bring our A game, so let's look at what that looks like. A, first of all, we have to accept his story is true. The next thing is we have to acknowledge his accomplishments, accomplishments and sacrifices. There are people out there who think that Jesus actually walked the earth and he was a good guy. He even taught some in the synagogues and that's it. But we have to acknowledge all of his accomplishments and sacrifice. We need to appreciate his commitment to save us. If he had a union mentality, you know, at Gethsemane, he would have said, you know, I've prayed long enough. I'm going to go nap with the disciples. If I could do any other way, I'd rather do it. But no, he didn't have that attitude. He said, Lord, if there's any other way, you tell me. But otherwise, I'm doing what you've asked me to do. Not my will, but yours. We need to accompany him. The word tells us to follow him. We need to add our faith. Continually add to our faith. It's not enough to start with. Start with the mustard seed. Absolutely. All it takes is a mustard seed. Everyone preaches that. All you need is that little bit. Uh, let me encourage you. You should start with that. But if you could have two mustard seeds, imagine. I mean, if one mustard seed can move a mountain, imagine two or three mustard seeds. The, you know what it is, right? They're the smallest seed, and they create one of the biggest plants in the garden. What if you had a handful of mustard seeds? Like the Rockies? Who would be the Sahara? Just, that'd be it. That kind of faith. It's okay to start with a mustard seed. My challenge is, if I have a mustard seed, God, give me two mustard seeds. If I have a little bit of faith, Lord, help that grow. Add to my faith. Pour in and transform me. We need to allow his words to change our perspective. Allow his words to change our actions. And allow his words to change our destiny. You know, he has got a better plan for your future than you do. You think you know what you're doing. I, I got to work till this magic number of years in and age and then I can retire. Did you know that the word retirement is not in the Bible? God, what are you doing with me right now? What? One of my pastors, Pastor Jack, when, when I first started ministry, he was the seniors pastor and I was the youth director. And he said, uh, God doesn't believe in retirement, but he, leaves in, he believes in retreading. So he will retread you. He'll, he'll give you a new purpose, a new direction. If you've got more time on your hands, he can get you doing other things. That's all there's to it. And so you might not be driving down the express lane at a buck, whatever, <clears throat> but you can continue to move forward and bring glory to God. And I, countless times I've been in a, a, a senior's home and with someone who's uh, in long-term care and they're really struggling. And sometimes they say, you know, Pastor, I don't know why I'm still here. 
because I don't do what I used to do here. I don't know what I used to do there. And I said, you know what? I can't tell you what that purpose is, but I know that as long as you're breathing his air on this planet, he's got a purpose for you. And I know for a fact that some of those people that are, are as they would say, stuck in those places, stuck in that body that's not cooperating with them, man, they spend more time in prayer pushing back the darkness, tearing down strongholds, covering their family, and, and, and even praying, blessing their church. You know what kind of blessing this church has with some of the folks who we haven't seen in a long time? And I, I reach out and they're saying, you know what, I'm praying for this place. And I thank you for the word. You're still watching online. Hello. Thank you for your prayers. And you just, they, they keep going. You have no idea what kind of covering we have with folks that aren't able to join us, and yet their hearts are there. And accomplish the last A there, accomplish all you can to fulfill the scripture and glorify God. A, 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 accept, acknowledge, appreciate, accompany, add, allow, accomplish. I thought I was done with my A's, but there's a few more later on. This one. <laughs> if we do all of those A's, if we bring our A game, but we've, we've still missed the boat if after all of that we don't love Jesus who first loved us. But God, look what I'm doing. I'm at church every time the doors are open. I'm, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm, I'm being a good servant. And we should be a good servant. No question. But what's your heart say? What, what's your heart doing? And I know a lot of people, that, they're not playing a game. They've come to church and they've poured out and they've given. The thing is, you get so busy doing that. And I'm not saying that they're on purpose saying, oh, I don't really love you, God. I don't think anyone came in here going, I don't really love God. But you've been so busy, and I think what God is telling me and all of us is to say, do you love me? He's asking that question he asked Peter. Peter was the guy who was in his court, who, was, who recognized that he was the Messiah, who, who uh, would be the big mouth, who established the early church, preaching after Acts 2, and the Spirit fell. And he was the guy who, who brought all the disciples back together again and began the early church. He was the guy. And Jesus asked him, do you still love me? And so I'm not talking to brand new people, do you love Jesus? You may be trying to figure that out. I'll tell you what, it's worth it. But the Holy Spirit will confirm that in your heart. And if you've never done that, please talk to me after. Because today, you could say, you know what, Jesus? I want that relationship. I want your forgiveness. I want the hope of heaven. I want to be in relationship with you. I want to learn how to love you because you love me. If you've never done that before, even online, connect with us. We would love to talk to you about how to start that relationship. But like I said, I started when I was 8 and 17, and now I'm 50. <laughs> so I've been doing this a while, <laughs> and I've been in ministry since 1993 in different various shapes and sizes, and I want to make sure for me and anyone who just does this by routine and commitment and regular practice that, that in prayer, in those tiny moments with God, and it's, if it's in the car, your prayer closet, wherever it is, that you just recognize not just everything he's done for us because it's not like you owe me. He doesn't have that attitude. The fact is we do owe him everything. But that's not the attitude he takes. He just, he says, I, I gave you everything because I love you that much. And for us to just learn not just the right words to say, not just the right things to do, but in our heart of hearts. And say, yeah, you know what? I love you, Jesus. I love you. And I, I love you. And, and the reason Pentecostals repeat it over and over again, <laughs> our, our worship songs, is because I want to get to that place where my heart's caught up with my head. And I'm singing those words, and some people are like, why is it the same verse over and over? I'll tell you why. Maybe it's just for me, but I think there's a few others in the room. I'm singing the same words, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit goes, bam, right into my heart. And then the next time I sing it, I'm like, yes. <laughs> like I, Finally, I get it. It just took me a few more times, you know? So if you have some conservative evangelicals making fun of Pentecostals and how much we sing it, we're just like, well, we just really want to mean it, and sometimes it takes a bit, but <laughs> I want you to really mean it. Not just, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. But yes, I love Jesus. And not just because the Bible tells me so. Because my heart tells me so. I can't build that bridge for you, but I can certainly point to that important step that we need to take. We've missed it if after all that we haven't fallen in love with Jesus. It's my deep desire for you 
all to fall deeply in love with Jesus. Deeply. And some of you may have a deeper relationship with me. It's not a competition. I think that's fantastic. But my only challenge is now, however deep you think you are in love with Jesus, guess what? That's good till about right now. And then I want you to fall even deeper in love with Jesus. Not just one mustard seed. Imagine two. Not just deeply in love. What? Imagine even deeper. Or can, maybe you can't imagine. I can't even imagine. But I'm asking for it. Because I know what my answer is supposed to be. And it isn't always where I, what I'd like it to be. If I was honest, yeah, I love God. I always do. But am I pursuing the deeper love of Jesus Christ? He's given all of His love to us. Poured out on the cross. Promised after the resurrection. And promised through His word. I will come again. I've made a place for you. I'm coming again to get you. We're going to be all together. I'm going to establish a new heaven and a new earth. You're with me forever. That's when we get to say, and they all lived happily ever after. But until that time, do you love Jesus? I was typing my revelations on this phone with my thumbs, as I said. I'm challenging my ability to spell things correctly. As I like spelling things correctly, but just my thumbs don't. Anyway, it kept spelling live Jesus instead of love Jesus. Live Jesus. And I back up, and of course, it's this big, right, on my phone. I'm trying to get it to the right spot. Live Jesus, live Jesus. And I'm like, Lord, this is a message on love Jesus. Can you help me out here? To live like Jesus, we must love the way he did, including loving him back, including loving Jesus. And maybe you don't know. I don't have the words, Pastor. I don't know what to do next. I don't. Then ask the Holy Spirit to help you love Jesus. Some grew up surrounded by all these elements, the A stuff, but sadly familiarity due to proximity did not breed a heartfelt affinity to the lover of our souls. Just a commitment in doing stuff. So we, we've been in church since we were kids. We know how to do church. We know how to even shake hands and smile and how are you doing? I'm fine. But that genuine passion for the Lord is something we need to pursue and not, you know, I don't care if we've done it once or 100 times or 10,000 times coming to church, being engaged in our relationship with God. We've got to find a fresh way to connect in our hearts with the living God. And some grew up with all of these elements, but some of their faith has only been an exercise of reason and argument, intellectual assent, just an idea, not a passion. And I'm not saying don't study the Word of God. Absolutely, get into it. But if it only becomes a textbook, Pastor Brian and I were talking about it this week. You come out of Bible college and you need to do um, a devotion on John for Tuesday night's uh, classroom. And then Thursday morning we're getting back into the Old Testament and, and the first five books, the Pentateuch. And, and, and sometimes there's a little bit on authorship. And I'm like, Jesus, or God wrote the Word of God. Let's start arguing about whose writing style. It might be more this guy or it might be that guy. You know, I don't care if you want to look into the, some of that stuff, but at the end of the day, the Holy Word of God is God's Holy Word. And so let's not get bogged down by stuff like that. Even, even eschatology, which is important, we, I believe in pre-trib and all that, but, but it's okay to, to discover those things and talk about them as long as they're not dividing the church, right? That we love Jesus more than that. And so... There is people who have been all around it, but they don't have an affinity for God because they just are in doing mode. And then there's people who give it a mental assent, but don't have the heart. And then for others still, life has thrown them circumstances that our love has been averted. We're too busy trying to keep our nose above the water and just stay alive to pursue being in love with God. We want to love God, but there's pain. We want to love God, but there's a struggle that keeps us from embracing Him. Before embracing other coping mechanisms, before embracing other practices, or without embracing Him at all. The struggle is real. The biggest thing in their life is their struggle, not their God. And I don't make light of anyone's struggle. But I'm here to tell you 100% that God is bigger than your struggle. And He will show that to you if you will love Him and trust Him. 
easier said than done when the struggle is all you see. I'm telling you from a perspective that God has walked me through some valleys, walked through some other people through these valleys, even people in this room. You'd be shocked to hear some of the stories about how God has kept some people in here alive instead of dead and in faith instead of lost because he's a good and faithful God. But do you love him? It doesn't work without God. Without love, it's a gong show. Now, some of you go, I remember that. And others are like, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> so back in the, oh, I don't know, 70s or 80s, there was a show called The Gong Show. And people would get up, this is before American Idol or anything, they would get up with their talent, and they had three guest judges that were, you know, superstars or whatever. And if this singer was terrible, or if this juggler was, you know, dropping the balls, or if this whatever talent they had, if they were lousy at it, the guys would get up and get their, their big stick, and they'd walk over to this humongous symbol, and they would just go, gong, and that meant the event was over. Like, sit down, Charlie, nice try. Don't even, don't even, just go away. Without love, life would be a gong show. It's funny enough, there's a scripture, 1 Corinthians 13. If I have not love, I'm a resounding gong. Bong, no good. Bong, not enough. Bong, you missed it. Bong, there's no power in it. There's no power in all our doing, all our thinking, all our actions, if we have not love. So I'm not, this isn't a message of straighten up and fly away and just start doing the right things. I'm saying uh, connect with God and, and make sure that you, Yes, I hope, I pray and hope that your heart is filled with gratitude for what he's done for you and some of the things you haven't even seen before. He saved your life and you didn't even know it. You know why? Because he saved your life instead of letting it go down roads it could have. Thank you, Jesus. Without love, it's a gong show, 1 Corinthians 13. Love because you are loved. Jesus shows us the way in Romans 5, 6 to 8. You know this. For while we were still helpless, where we were at our worst... At the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Because you are so loved. And you know this one, that all the golf tournaments and hockey arenas and other sports events, Someone brings a big card. John 3.16. I'm going to read John 3.16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So this is it, church. First Six words. For God so loved the world. In fact, it's that third word that really gets me, that God challenges me with. For God so loved. So loved he gave up his only son. So loved he gave his son to be tortured and brutally killed. So loved. How much does God love us? The scripture says it's, it's so low, maybe you remember this old song, so low you can't get under it, so high you can't get over it, so wide you can't get around it. I'll be thinking about that later. God's love is unconditional. It's also unfathomable. The depths, the richness, the immenseness of His love. For God so loved, and I, I guess the challenge he, he hit me with, and this is up to you to, Embrace it or not, but it's like he so loved the world. So this is the question I ask myself and I challenge you to today. Do you so love Jesus? So love Jesus. It's more than my kids, more than my wife, more than my grandchild. Do you so love Jesus? More than your pet goldfish, Who, whoever is close to you. More than your sports car you waited your whole life to finally buy. 
you know, my guys are a little bit bitter because they're like, man, I see this fancy car, this sports car, and it's all old people driving them. I'm like, you know why? I'll tell you why. Because <laughs> they worked their whole life to finally be able to buy that car. That's why it's okay to own yeah. And Brian's like, yes, he's got his, his next car already lined up. But I know Brian's heart. We don't worship the car. It's nice to have a beautiful car. But it, no matter what car it is, no matter our spouse or our, our cottage or our home down in the south or our family, or, or nothing, nothing compares to the love of Jesus Christ. And as I grow in Christ, one day, after I get rid of all my flesh, I hope to love Jesus more than anything else. He says, I'm a jealous God. So I can't put anything between me and God if I want to love Him the way He so loved me. So loved us. Do you so love Jesus? I know the answer. I want to. So two things. I'm going to invite the worship team up in a second, but I want you to bow your heads with me. You're doing the same thing. We're doing this first, then we're going to play some music and we'll go eat. One thing is to invite the Holy Spirit to put His finger on anything that's keeping us from loving Jesus. And they could be good things. They could be really good things. And we just need to put them in the right place. Let's bow our heads. Holy Spirit, we, we know that you love us more than we could ever truly get. Maybe one day when we stand face to face. But Holy Spirit, we do love you and we want to learn how to love you better. So right now, Holy Spirit, I'm asking you just to examine our hearts. This isn't communion. This is just, I want to be in love with you, Jesus. And there's some things in my life you've blessed me with and, and they've been more my focus than you. Forgive me. Forgive me. God, I thank you for those blessings. I thank you for the good things, the great things you've done in my life. But I pray, Lord, that I would submit them first to my love for you. And on the other hand, Lord, if there's woundedness or brokenness, you see in the depths of every heart within the sound of my voice this morning, the deep brokenness, the deep hurt, the deep uh, discouragement, God, and Lord, well I, well, I can't just whisk that all away. I wish I could. But even in that hurt or discouragement, help me say, Lord, I, I'm struggling, but I love you. And I put my love for you over this uh, tearing in my heart, that these, these broken pieces that I'm dealing with. I love you first with what little love I have. And Lord, you will restore my heart. You will help me walk through this thing one day. I'll be on the other side of it. I don't know how. I don't know when. But I love you first. So Holy Spirit, whether we're on the mountaintop with great things in our lives, we submit those things to you because we love you. And if we're in the valley and we're struggling with stuff, Lord, give us the strength and the grace to walk through those things. But also, Lord, we choose this morning to say, I love you. We submit those things to you now. Worship team, come on up. Dear Lord, help us find you in our hearts once again. And for those of us who have been doing this for such a long time, I pray for a fresh anointing to love you more. Or turn us to our first love, our passion, our gratitude. It would result in deepening our relationship with you in ways we can't imagine. And thank you for the privilege of being in relationship with you. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Let's stand together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son and whosoever believes will not perish they shall have eternal life 
I shall hold to the cross. I shall hold to God alone, for His love has salvaged me. For His love has set me free. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that so ever believes will not perish, they shall have eternal life. I shall wait. thank you that you first loved us. This week, I pray, God, that you will help us love you back. We will love you deeply. And anything that gets in our way, Lord, we just put it at the foot of the cross. We just put it under the blood of Jesus. We just submit it to you so that our relationship with you will continue to grow and to flourish and that spiritually we will gain momentum. Lord, you've been doing a great work in this house over the last few weeks since Solomon said, since thy women were on their face praying, since we've been asking you, God, to pour out, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord, you're doing a work here. We're paying attention, Lord. You want to take us deeper. And so, Lord, we say yes, God. And we submit to you those things that would stand away from you reviving our hearts, from moving in this place deeply. There are other things you want to do in this place, but you want to do it in relationship. You want to do it in love. And so, Lord, we just thank you for the privilege of being called your children today. Bless our fellowship. Bless the food out there. But, Lord, this week, carry this word in our hearts through Monday and Wednesday.
Wednesday and Friday, like all through the week, God. Just remind us, Lord, you are waiting to hear from your children. We'll just pour our hearts out to you this week. And I know, Lord, that you will uh, plant some things in our hearts, that you will birth things, that you will grow things. And we will see the goodness of the presence of God overwhelmingly in our lives as we love you deeply. In Jesus' name, amen.